And uh, Christopher Moore, welcome to the program. How are you? Doing great, Tommy Lovage. Glad to be here. All right. Hey, uh, it's kind of interesting. Yeah, for for the longest time, and, and I'm I'm just I'm not going to be disparaging about it or anything. But it's just probably District Two is getting more attention now than it has gotten in quite some time. You know, just because of the, the diversity of the candidates. I mean, as far as we have, you know, four candidates as opposed to, you know, there were plenty of times when Floyd ran and nobody ran against him. Mm-hmm. Right. You know, so you always get a little bit more, uh, you get a little get more scrutiny, a little bit more attention when you have four people that are, you know, beating their own drum. So what is your vision for for District 2? And what do you think needs to happen to, you know, bring that part of the city along? Well, I tell you, Tom, uh, we in District 2, we already know exactly what we want. Uh, uh, the foundation has been laid over the years, even when uh, Councilman Price and T.J. Patterson was in the office. We've been through the drawing board, and uh, we've written a list and punch list and all kind of wish list on the board. So we know that in District 2 we want uh, what every American want, and that's, number one, equity. We want to be respected, and we want to be recognized, even with the growth uh, that's taking place in the city of Lubbock. Uh, another thing that you know that we want is equal education, equality education. Uh, we want safe environments for our youth and senior citizens. Uh, we want economic development. We want to see some development, some growth. Uh, we want beautification. And again, again, again we want to be recognized and uh, we want to be respected as being part uh, of the city of Lubbock. And so my vision uh, for that is to bring forth visionary leadership. We need visionary leadership even though we're going into politics, but we need a Nehemiah. We need someone who can build upon that uh, foundation, some structures, some systems, so that we can flow in regards to seeing some progress uh, in District 2. And so uh, my vision for that is to, again, provide visionary leadership uh, to bring people, places, and things together so that we can effectively communicate what is the issues, what are the solutions that demonstrate progress uh, that makes a difference. All right. Do you have specific ideas for how to make that happen? Well, first of all, uh, is really uh, banding together. We need to be unified. We need to mobilize leadership. Uh, one sector of that is that we have no representation on some of the most important boards in the city of Lubbock. So one of the things that we're going to have to do is that we're going to have to muster up those who have influence, those that, that who have information, that have resources. So my goal is to bring together and put together teams of researchers, uh, task forces, to get on certain boards so that we can get information so that those boards can feel the heart of, of District 2. If we don't have representation on those particular boards, how can anyone notice us? And so, you know, being a, a, a Bible teacher, uh, what I like about Jesus is that he touched our infirmity so that he could effectively pray for us. In other words, we need people from the community to represent us on different city boards so that we can bring that communica- communication to them, bring that communication back to the, to the community and start working together uh, in order to make some changes in East Lubbock and also in, in District 2. Okay. Um, I, I just want to hit the rewind button. First of all, when you're listing, just, just for the listening audience, when you're listing off all these areas that you think need improvement and attention. You know, you're not reading it off of a list. Right. Okay. But you did mention safety and security. Yes. Okay. For, for district two, what do you think needs to be done and how can you make district two safer for people and, and what makes it unsafe? Well, I'll tell you, uh, what, what would make it safer uh, again, when we think of District 2, we think about neighborhood associations. We have neighborhood associations, and I can tell just in the segment of District 2, we have about nine different neighborhood associations. Only two to three of those associations are, are in use or available or still alive. So one of the things that we need to do is, again, bring structure those pillars that's in the community. We need to bring, revitalize and resurrect those neighborhood associations so that we can have a point of contact. That's where, that's where we came in in regards to neighborhood watches and neighborhood groups and anything that would happen in our community. We had a point of contact to go to in order to get information. So 
my my uh, goal in doing that, and you know, I've talked even before I started running for office, is I talk with Luna, with Tony Spray, in regards to what do we need to do to resurrect the no neighborhood association so that we can provide a place where we can come together and communicate about the needs in a Pacific community. And so when you think of safety and security, well, we want our elders to be safe. We had incidents not long ago uh, where a young person or whatever was raping our elderly and touching our youth. Well, what do we need to do? Number one, we need an emergency response team. Who do we go to? Well, that brings together again the neighborhood associations that bring again, they bring together our churches, that bring uh, together means like my brother and sister keepers, uh, East Level Community Alliance groups, ELPN groups, whatever groups that we need to bring together. But uh, we, uh, for num number one, I know for sure, we need to uh, resurrect the neighborhood associations in our community. What about education in your district? How do you think that needs to be improved? Well, education, I, I, there are some great things that have already taken place that I definitely want to recognize. As you, have no, as you guys know, is that Texas Tech University has partnered with Estacada High School, and Estacada High School is a early college high school. That is a plus for East Lubbock. That's a, it, that's, and then Estacada High School is in District 1, so it missed me uh, by a street. Mm -hmm. uh, but the, the positive thing is that the children that attend Estacada High School live in district number two. Uh, so with the early college high school, uh, realizing that our students from a freshman to a senior can earn up to 60 uh, college credits when, they're gradu when they graduate is a plus for our community. So we want to make sure that we go back to the grassroots and go back to the junior high schools and the elementary schools and make sure that they are, they are prepared to take the TSI scores so that they can enroll into those uh, dual credit classes and earn those associate degrees when they're a senior. So there are some positive things that's going on in the community. There are some changes that's also taking place in the community when you think of Owls Elementary. Well, there's been a great improvement as far as the, the grading and the points that's taking place over there and that the culture is changing. Even at Dunbar, the culture is changing, and so we're starting some things. One of the positive things that I think about school and making changes in school is the PTA. Well, we need to embrace, again, resurrect our PTA, our Parent Teacher Association. We need to see what we can do uh, to influence parents to participate in their children's uh, education. All right, uh, we're in conversation with Christopher Moore. He's candidate for District 2 City Council. Interesting that, you know, a lot of the things that you're talking about are things that would happen or that you would try and implement outside of the city council chambers. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's it's a, a little bit different approach than what you, right. you hear from Saul. And Tom, let me say this, is that I, I believe for me personally that what the city council seat does for me is give me a platform. It gives me a platform to uh, continue to expand my influence. So if I'm already engaged in the community, but it gives me a larger platform to bring together a larger group of people to unite together to uh, achieve some goals. Yeah, just maximize your visibility. Maximize, yes, I sir. I get it. All right, 17 minutes after the hour, we'll be back. Good morning, recentered 30 degrees. O'Donnell has 34. News Talk 790 KFYO. Currently have a temperature of 36 degrees, 50% humidity. It is 823. Good morning. In conversation with Christopher Moore, he is City Council District 2 candidate on the phone. HR 770-5790 if you've got a question or comment. What's up, man? All right, just a quick question. I'm kind of con yeah, this, listening to the uh, candidate there this morning. I listened Monday, too, and one of, a couple of my concerns is that this council has seemed to be leaning more left and left, and I think that's a danger to our city economically. I've been looking at some of the crime. You've talked about some of the crime that's going on in, in uh, uh, District 2. And, uh, and uh, the thing that I'm, we all recognize, we recognize for the crime that's going on. And the thing is, what, what are we going to do to clean that up? I, I, I called the chief of police on yesterday trying to see if well, we can get some mobile units out over by tech, by uh, – Lowry Field and, you know, get get a mobile unit over there to try to clean up some of that crime over there. As a city councilman, what do you intend to do as far as crime? And then the other thing is I wanted to ask is as far as uh, some of these budgets and how, how we're doing on, on allowing LPNL to come in and, and do these increases when they don't really have to, uh, if you would have to do that, uh, how, how would you vote to clean up things for your constituents as, as far as that? I don't see anybody 
allowing, you know, their bills to go up. You know, I understand budgets have to be done, but if it don't have to be done, it shouldn't have to be done. And the last thing is, would you uh, be more in favor of having your vote uh, represent your constituents and, and as far as town halls? And I'll hang up and listen. Okay, surely. I, I appreciate the questions. Those are some great questions. Again, when I t- talked about the opportunity what, as far as safety in the environment for our elders and also for our youth, uh, one of the things that we really need to embrace, again, is to have a strong neighborhood association uh, that, can re- that can create what we call neighborhood watch. I, I n- definitely believe that, first of all, that we're responsible and as neighbors to take care of one another. I think we should always be the first point of contact of taking care of one another. But also in terms of law enforcement, it's important that where there are, where there are areas where there is high crime uh, and that we need more uh, scenes uh, as far as the uh, police department being present in the community. So, uh, it, you know, I would hate to have to uh, have a, a police station uh, housed in our community Uh, if we can take care of our own community. But if that's necessary, we want to do what's necessary in order order to keep the safety, again, for our elders, for our our youth, and and also for our community. So, again, I I would say, uh, sir, that we need our neighborhood associations, LUNA. Those guys have uh, contacts with the the chief of staff, with the police, and and they they are engaged uh, with the safety uh, of our communities, and so that's one of the things we want to do. Another thing in regards to just LP and L is that you know we'll be on those boards, and we'll be able to voice as far as I live in East Lubbock, so I can tell you uh, uh, that you know it affects me as, as it affects you as well. So I, I feel the tension in that, and so we'll be able to voice a re- or have representation and communication from what we're experiencing, what you're experiencing. I'm experiencing the same thing, so your opinion will be my opinion as well. And then when you think in terms of um, uh, the vote as far as the constituents, uh, yes, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to, I think someone is putting together a town hall meeting for us, and, and we'll continue to communicate with the, uh, uh, with the neighborhood associations, with the neighborhoods, and I'll be over uh, in your neighborhood as well. I can tell you some years back uh, there was a, a shooting that took place at the Gator Club, and uh, personally, uh, me being over by Estacada High School, but I uh, intentionally – uh, brought a group of people over on 65 5th Street and prayed over that neighborhood. And so I definitely believe in the power of prayer, uh, but I also believe in the power of, uh, you know, of us being responsible and taking care of our, our, our neighborhood. So I appreciate the questions. All right. Um, <clears throat> as far as the neighborhood and, and bringing it back from where it is, mm-hmm. What do you think were the factors that took it to where it is now? Well, uh, I can tell you, Tom, I, I've been part of the Neighborhood Associations, Parkway Cherry Point Associations. We have those organizations. There is not an awareness. A lot of people are not aware of the Neighborhood Associations. And if there is an awareness of the Neighborhood Associations, they're not. there's not support systems. So we have a tendency of going back to the drawing board and starting all over again when we offer, already have infrastructure in place. We need support systems. We don't need to reinvent any type of wheel. We don't have to start over. We're not starting over and we're not looking back. We're going to take what's in place and we're going to build upon it. So we need support. We need support systems. Just need to change, change the oil and fix a flat tire. Yes, sir. Yeah, I get it. Certainly. All right. Uh, candidate for City Council mm-hmm. District 2, Christopher Moore. I'm sure we'll hear a little bit more from you a little bit later on. Thanks for coming on the program Thank today. Thank you so much, Tom. Thank you, Laura. That's I appreciate great. it. Thanks Thanks appreciate coming. it. It is 828, Tom and Laura. Hope the day's going well for you. Thanks for the ride. Don't forget, uh, you can order your roses from United Supermarket. They're beautiful. Chad Hasty is coming up next. We'll see you tomorrow. Don't forget, Jerry Rillins, the Car Pro, 739. And Vikram Baliga, Lubbock County Horticulture Extension Agent. It's baby shower time.